We all want someone to love. There you are. We did have instant chemistry. It's awesome. But you've never seen love like this before. Age playing makes us stronger as a couple. <gasps> Provocative. Daly and I have always been polyamorous, vampires. Eye-opening. To see Monica getting bigger just makes me feel proud. Outrageous. I'm wired towards older women. Proving there's always someone for everyone. This is the woman of my dreams. Hi. Or something. I love you, Vanilla. So sexy. This is Extreme Love Stories. This time, meet the woman who has men queuing up to pay for her luxury holidays and expensive treats. I have never spent a dime. And the lawyer who's hoping to break her golden rule. I have never slept with any of my dates. <laughs> and later, the couple who coach people in the art of cheating with their partner's approval. I don't put a limit on the number of partnerships that I can have. So I already have an older guy, I need younger men. I mean, why not? But first, meet Wiley and Stefan, an ordinary couple in an extraordinary situation. It was love at first sight as far as I loved how he dressed, I loved how he acted, I loved his demeanor, I loved his personality. The bio of his Grindr account said something like, country boy, loves the wild, loves animals, vegan. And then like, picture of a tree. <laughs> These bohemian boyfriends live an unconventional life on their converted bus in Texas. We bought it a couple months back, and this is where we live, uh, our friend's backyard. <laughs> but there's one thing about this relationship that you might not be expecting. Hey, Sue. How are you? I am a man, and I am actually pregnant. This pregnancy was definitely not planned, absolutely not. Carrying a baby isn't something many men expect to experience. And although Wiley didn't plan for this particular bump in the road, there's a biological reason he's now eating for two. I identify as a transgender male. Wiley was transitioning from female to male when he became pregnant. I have always felt uncomfortable in my, you know, female-born body. I always felt different, like I'm stuck in something that I don't see as myself. I was maybe about 11 or 12 in this photo, and. I don't really know who I was at that time. Once I hit puberty, that was a big, a big turning point for me. I was just like, I want my chest gone, you know, I, you know, I want to have facial hair. But I didn't really know anything about that. I didn't know how to explain that. I didn't know what to do. And I was just like, OK, well, I'll just dress in guys' clothes, you know, and be more masculine. But even to that extent, it still wasn't good enough. I started testosterone in 2012. I got top surgery in 2013. And like ever since then, like people saw me, like saw how happy I was and how I could be myself. This one is in 2013, right when I had top surgery. I could finally be my true self of who I wanted to be and who I wanted to become as a man. Although Wiley's had a procedure to remove his breasts, he's yet to have what's called bottom surgery, an operation to create a penis. Wiley's female genitals had been a turnoff for previous partners. Everybody that I've dated in the past, they didn't accept me for who I was, or they were all OK with it to up to an extent, probably up to about where we became physically intimate. Stefan knew right off the bat that I was a transgender male. And while Stefan was open-minded when it came to sex, he did have one reservation. It was a question, can you get pregnant? We had talked about testosterone and what he had been told by his doctors and what we had believed to be truth. Turns out, <laughs> that wasn't truth. The pair believed that because Wiley was taking testosterone to give him male attributes like facial hair, there was no way he could get pregnant. I started having morning sickness. I found out I was pregnant at 11 weeks. After I took the test and I saw that it popped positive, I was, I was nervous, I was very emotional, I started crying. I didn't know what to do, I didn't know what to think, I didn't know what to say. As a gay person, I don't think I ever really planned for biological children. The couple were torn. You know, I have a chance to choose, do I want to give up for adoption? You know, what am I going to do? Over in New York, Alyssa's made a decision that few small-town girls would ever consider. 
An independent and adventurous woman, she's traveling from Wisconsin for a romantic weekend with a complete stranger. And this first date has a twist. Her mystery man is paying for everything, starting with her hotel. I'm feeling a little nervous. I mean, I hope he looks like what he does in his pictures. Not feeling nervous. I, I don't get nervous. Hey! Oh, my God. <laughs> it's good to finally see you. You too. You look awesome. You look Thank great. Thank you. You did so love your scarf. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> The couple were matched on a website that pairs rich businessmen with travel companions like Alyssa. But Oliver's not desperate. He's busy and simply managing his love life like a business operation. I do this primarily, I'd say, because uh, of convenience. You can filter out the riffraff qualities that you're not really looking for. As far as paying for the uh, other person, I have no problem with it at all. In fact, I insist it's that way. Don't sleep with pigs. Never have. I'd rather just go home alone. I mean, maybe if I'm like really, really messed up or something. Good thing Alyssa's no catfish. This website, you could definitely meet someone in a romantic way. You could fall in love with somebody easily. Alyssa's met plenty of guys willing to foot the bill for her flights, hotel, and flashy dinners. I've been to a lot of places. I've been to Cancun, London, Ibiza. Las Vegas twice, Miami, Arizona, and I'm going to Dubai soon. Every date, every guy I've seen, they do pay for everything. I've never spent a dime traveling. So is Oliver hoping that bankrolling her New York getaway will mean he'll get lucky? Well, that's a personal question. <laughs> no, are you going to show this to Alyssa? Um, what do I hope to get out of this? No, I'm joking. Um, I'm hoping to get out of this a new adventure in an old town, one of my favorite places, New York City, with a quality girl by my side. What can I say? That's it, though. That's it. No, no other ulterior motives. <laughs> of course, it's OK to sleep with a girl on the first date. I think, hopefully, tonight. Hopefully. We'll see. As she gets to know him, has Oliver done enough to impress Elissa? He's very outgoing, he speaks his mind, and he's confident, and I think confidence is sexy. I have always been into older guys. I think they're more handsome, they're more mature. I like a gentleman, and not some guy who wants to Netflix and chill. I could definitely see myself, like, dating Oliver. He's really cute. The night's going well for Oliver and only gets better when he finds out about Alyssa's part-time job. What kind of modeling? I do basically anything. I don't shoot nudes, but I do like lingerie, uh, sports, swimsuits, basically anything you can think of. Very nice, very nice. At 44 years old, Oliver is double Alyssa's age, so that box is checked. But as the evening progresses, is a little Netflix and chill on the cards. <laughs> I have never slept with any of my dates. <laughs> I have, like, kissed the guys. I'll, like, hug them. I'll kiss them. I'll be friendly. But, I mean, I make it clear I'm not going to sleep with you. Sadly for Oliver, this time he'll be going home alone. So, will Alyssa's no sex rule rule her out of a second vacation date with Oliver? I'm glad we found each other on that website. I'm glad we arranged this trip and I hope to see her again. But Alyssa is a busy girl. I am off to Miami, where it's going to be warm, and that's going to be next week. So I'm excited for that. <laughs> Sounds like she's got plenty of choices. And according to love coaches Kenya and Carl, choice can be very, very good. 747. It's an hour till we'll start. Their whirlwind romance began in college over 20 years ago. It was love at first sight in that I felt like he was responsible and grown up and just really handsome and really smart. I was very physically attracted to her. Wanted to have sex with her right away. They couldn't keep their hands off each other. But 10 years into their relationship, Kenya got the shocking news that every wife dreads. Carl came home and told me that he was falling in love with a woman at his job. I was distraught, you know? I was like, what are you talking about? It wasn't something I felt weird about or, or anxious about. I had no intentions on being with the woman. 
you know, behind Kenya's back, that kind of thing. So I just brought it to her. When he told me this, he was thinking polygamy. He was thinking he would have two wives, and I just wasn't going for it. You know, I told him, if we're going to do this, I'm going to do it too. So that took some time to work out. You know, because like, I've heard of men dating other women or, or being in polygamy, but women dating other men when they're already married was completely foreign to me. And the more I thought about it, I said, you know what, maybe it does make sense, you know, for equality. <laughs> 12 years later, and the couple are both dating other people, as well as being happily married and very, very open with their children. We're not really a normal family. I think we should do some seminars at your school. I just imagined you on stage being all like, oh, hello, throwing condoms into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> they help me through all my relationships, giving me advice when I want it, when I don't, I mean, they don't really care. To help others avoid the potential hurt feelings of a polyamorous relationship, the couple have created their very own Love Academy. What we do is we educate people in what we call the new paradigm of love, which means that it's no longer ownership-based. Yeah, polyamorous relationships are becoming a lot more common. At one time, a study showed it's the fastest growing relationship style in the US. We deal with every kind of problem from people cheating on their spouse and now they want to tell their spouse the truth. We have people who want to open their relationship and they're afraid. Today, they're meeting new clients, Mason and Luna, who've just started an open relationship, but are finding that the polyamorous path is not an easy one to tread. We came together saying, like, we want to explore openness. We want to know what that looks like. And we've been at, like, play parties together and seen each other intimate with other people, but there's never been feelings involved. There were definitely fireworks when Luna first met Kenya. It was my idea to come here today. I met Kenya at a all-women love fest, and we ended up being in a self-pleasuring circle. And I was sitting right next to her, having a massive, powerful, like, transformational orgasm. I just knew I had a lot to learn from her. Now it's Luna that wants a bigger pleasuring circle, but has she crossed the line? Luna has found a lover who she uh, has feelings for and is in love with. Yeah, there's definitely fears of him thinking that I'm gross or like not a, a good partner because yeah. I'm desiring another man. Sure. And to be sexual and have sex with another man. Mason might be open to his girlfriend sleeping with someone else, but what happens when she reveals she's fallen in love with his close friend? In San Antonio, Wiley and Stefan's world was rocked when they discovered Wiley was pregnant. Now they've got some big decisions to make. When I came home from work that day, I think a lot was just kind of rolling through our heads. We kind of just, at first, just sat in silence for about an hour and a half. I think then we just kind of started processing it. What I was going to do, what my choices were, we knew we had each other, you know, we'd figure out and get through this together. You know what, I really want to be a dad. So um, we're just going to go ahead and keep the baby and, you know, raise it. And Stefan was super, super supportive. Uh oh, here's my baby. You scared. Decision made, these dads are now trying to master the basics, starting with packing that all-important birthing bag. Do we need wipes? You're asking the wrong person. This is the first time I'm <laughs> <laughs> Do we need any washcloths? Do we need any, I don't know, butt cream? Butt cream, yes. Butt cream, yes. He says yes to the butt cream. Petroleum jelly. No, you put that What is this for? Do we need any bottles? Do you want your kid to eat? So, yes. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Thanks for that. You're quite welcome. Today's their last prenatal ultrasound before the birth. Nervous, but happy that, you know, our yeah. last ones have been pretty clear and good. What I'm hoping for, just healthy, normal, growing baby. 
in a good position, mm -hmm. has the best of our features, right? So it's, you know, up there on the... <laughs> Stefan and Wiley are having a boy, a relief for the pair, as they'd worried that Wiley's testosterone treatments might have posed a risk to a girl. If it was a little girl, there might be something as far as being pre-exposed to testosterone, because I was, you know, 11 weeks pregnant when I found out, and I was still on testosterone at that time. Wiley suspended his hormone transition treatments to avoid harming the baby, but it's taking a toll on him. It was a constant battle in my head. Like, I had to just continuously to tell myself, like, hey, it's not going to define me any less of a man. You know, it's not going to make me a woman. You know, I get to choose who I want to be. You know, and I am who I am. First off, I'm just going to kind of get familiar with, with his position, okay. where he's at. OK, so let me kind of give you an idea of what we're seeing. And what we want to see is that profile, just like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> How precious. <laughs> Look at that cute little profile. So let me go ahead and switch to the HD. Oh my gosh. Look at this precious little face. <laughs> That's our guy. As the scam continues, the couple are realizing just how unprepared for the birth they are. How's prepping coming along for birth? Are you guys thinking about doing prenatal classes or anything like that? It's a little nerve wracking. Not just yet. Not yet? <laughs> well, definitely, I would recommend it. It's making it all feel like it's about to happen. <laughs> I'm like, where's the birthing bag? We're not ready. <laughs> A little bit of anxiety, yes. Yeah. I am scared of the pain. I'm not going to lie about that. Even though he's worried about the pain, it's staying at a hospital that's got Wiley really scared. I'm probably the only transgender male that's pregnant, probably in Texas. How would I be treated as a transgender individual in the hospital? OK, this is not something you're going to see every day, is a man going through birth. But at the same time, we're still human, and to, you know, to call us by our correct pronouns and to respect us. With delivery being such risky business, will Wiley reconsider his idea for a home delivery? In North Carolina, Polyamorous Luna and Mason have a different dilemma. Have a seat anywhere. This free-spirited couple are in an open relationship, but they hit rocky ground when Luna recently fell in love with the one guy that might pose a problem. The person who uh, she's exploring intimacy in at the moment uh, is a dear friend of mine. Falling in love with your boyfriend's close friend is certainly a good reason to seek help. And thankfully, Luna and Mason have come to the poly experts. When I started uh, dating Taylor, all of a sudden, like, Mason started showing up for me more like, no, well, like, mm. I'm going to do this. And I really, I felt that shift. For me, I was always like, let's jump into this, because we aren't going to know. The anticipation is way worse than the realization, I think, right? <laughs> I like, hope. I think, right? I hope. So let's go Sometimes. there. <laughs> yeah. And so that was my philosophy. Her philosophy was like, let's go slow. Let's do real careful. And I appreciate that so much. But what happened was the flip side happened. She jumped into it. She fell in love. Oh. And I'm still like being really careful, because I don't want to push her away and all this stuff. So again, it's just a matter of practicing to go through these things with a little bit more mindfulness of yeah. be receptive to a different energy. Because that's what she's getting basically from Taylor. Really, she could probably be getting some of that stuff from you. But you have to be willing to go outside your comfort zone. With the advice to be more mindful of each other, Luna and Mason wrap up their session. All right, see you guys next time. It seems polyamory is never easy or straightforward, even for the experts. Discussing polyamory was extremely difficult at first. There were a lot of arguments, a lot of emotions. It was really challenging. Carl's girlfriends are interesting. I get along with his partners who are married. I get along with his partners who have so much common sense that they don't try to push me out of my place. But for the others, it is more challenging. Kenya prefers Carl's lovers to be married. So how will she react when Carl takes out another woman who's definitely single? I'm no longer married. In Texas, pregnant trans dad Wiley is almost at his due date. And on a scale of 1 to 10 of excitement, it's probably about 10. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. 
But as he doesn't want to risk being disrespected in hospital when he gives birth, Wiley's found a midwife who'll let him use her house. Our midwife, Rachel, um, you know, she's never done a trans birth. She has worked with queer couples before. We plan on having a water birth as well. You know, hopefully it plays out. This is all new to us as well, but it's also new to her. Oops, there he is. Midwife Rachel has never helped a man give birth before, so Wiley's keen to make sure that she has everything in place. How you doing? I'm good. So good. Good. You sleeping any better? Not too much. Not too much. I get a couple of hours still the same. Should we blow up the birth tub and see how that's going to go? Yes, for sure. Right, absolutely. Let's do it. Get in and see how it's going to feel. For sure. But we've got these handles, you know, a cup holder. And it's actually strong enough. I guess it could use a little bit more air, but you can actually, like, be sitting on the edge, too. That's pretty cool. It's yeah. really nice. It's roomy. It's roomy. It's roomy. So. Yeah, you're, like, totally <laughs> submerged. Like... <laughs> <laughs> if the baby's born in there, that's fine. We'll usually get you out to deliver the placenta, though, right. because then we can estimate blood loss okay. um, in the water. It's it's possible, but it's harder to know how much blood you're losing, and we want right. to know exactly how much. As long as the baby doesn't take a breath under the water, it's there's really no harm because they're in the water in your belly. Any resuscitation needs that need to happen, um, it can be done right here at the bedsides. As the anxiety builds, Wiley's feeling tense. The things that maybe I still might need to work on as far as like nervousness, probably just has to do the fact just being more comfortable in my body. Having had body issues mm -hmm. in the past, I think it's gonna be a really um, just transformative experience, but right. you're going to have to surrender to the trust right. and just trust your body. For me, the challenge is working with Wiley and accepting and opening up to the functions and the anatomy that he has. There's some real work to do there. Am I going to be able to deliver this baby, you know, happy and healthy? Is this water birth going to work out as I imagine it, as it's supposed to? Am I going to have to be rushed to the hospital because I'm, you know, laboring for too long and I can't? I've dilated as much as I could, but I can't deliver him. You know, so just hoping everything goes as well as planned, even though that's necessarily not what always happens. Worried about going through labor as a man, Wiley makes an emergency call to friend Tristan, a trans man who gave birth four years ago. There we go. Hey. Hey. Hello. Hi. Oh, my gosh. So good to see you guys. It's so good to see you. you. Now, you know, the anxiety of is just, you know, am I going to deliver on time? Is, you know, I want to have a home birth. I want to have a water birth. Is it going to be too nerve wracking for me to even want to go to the hospital? So that's not something I want to do. Um, yeah, it tapped into that, like, deep well of, of like, shame and self-doubt and internalized transphobia, like, completely fell apart. While Wiley and Stefan get some last-minute advice before their due date, Carl's out on his date with a woman who isn't his wife. Kenya and I have been in an open marriage for over 10 years. Carl's hooked up with single gal Ebene, despite Kenya preferring her husband to only sleep with married lovers. I prefer married men. <laughs> Interestingly, it's easier for me to conceptualize sharing a man. It's actually my preference. I like Carl for a lot of reasons. He's very affectionate and very sexual, and I love that. Okay. In terms of how much I talk to Kenya about my girlfriends or the women I'm seeing, I generally don't talk to her about that a lot. I just prefer to have my relationships to be separate, meaning a certain level of intimacy between you know me and my other partners. But any worries Kenya might have about Carl's sex with singles seem to be the last thing on her mind because she's busy enjoying a steamy afternoon delight with a cur. On day one, God said, let there be bubbles. Bubbles and titties, and that's it. <laughs> but he didn't say bubbles and titties. I don't put a limit on the number of partnerships that I can have. I mean, for me, I'm a human being. There are 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet. When we first started the process, I started having all these 
you know, thoughts and images of her having sex. We started to shed the rules over time. After a night of passion with their lovers, the next day in the office, it's back to business for our poly coaches. Clients Mason, Luna, and her lover, Taylor, are weighing heavily on the love guru's minds. Luna and Mason first came to see us because they had no idea how to have an open relationship. Yet they found themselves in an open relationship. One way to describe it might be uh, Luna and I are live-in partners, and, and Taylor and Luna are lovers, and Taylor and I are friends. Oh, my eyes. Okay, are you crying because you're so in love with us? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just so emotional. <laughs> Our relationship seems complex and complicated, just to be straight up about it. I had a private session with Taylor about two weeks ago. Was having a hard time because it was Mason and Luna's night. He was in tears. This new dynamic has changed and affected our relationship. Um, in our, our relationship? In, in like our, Taylor and I's relationship, relationship yeah, right? Yeah. You, yours and mine. I mean, part of that's, I guess, why we're doing this whole coaching thing. When you have men who want to fight for position, mm -hmm. you have a problem. Because this doesn't feel like a like male bravado kind no. of battle. With Luna, Mason, and Taylor at breaking point, it's time for drastic action. I think we have an intervention on our hands today. And this is make or break for them. They may not come out of this. But after a tense meeting, Carl and Kenya know just how to relax. Tinder. Look at this, 50 miles away. I need to change my parameter on here so it only gives me guys within five mile radius. I just, no, that's ridiculous. Baby. You need to date guys, even if they're an hour away, it's fine. It's kind of cute. Oh, he's 32. <laughs> he's 10 years younger than me. <laughs> Meet most of my guys on Tinder. I met this great guy on Tinder. He was a male nurse. Oh my God, can you imagine? the way he touches you, the way he knows how to deal with your body. He's a male nurse, not doctor, but nurse, nurturing, sweetness. He was very awesome. Most of the men I date are younger. I mean, why not? My husband is older than me, so I already have an older guy. I need younger men. Somebody <laughs> who's worth the drive, right? There we go. See? I would drive to see you 500 miles away if I saw uh, you on Tinder. Oh, you're too being nice. No, I think you're fine. Pregnant dad Wiley and his partner Stefan are getting some much needed advice from Tristan, a trans friend who's also had a baby. My main fear that I had when I first found out I was pregnant was the fact, you know, is very feminizing. You know, like the pregnancy world is like feminized to the point of exhaustion and discomfort yeah. for a lot of women I know. Yeah. <laughs> so if it's weird for them, like it's doubly weird for us. You know, queer people have brought babies into the world for a millennia. We have raised babies that other people gave birth to. We've cobbled together our families in so many different creative, unique, beautiful, perfect, special ways that like you guys are carrying on that sacred tradition and it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> right. Practice your breathing. <laughs> ah, bye. 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 How'd you feel about it? Um, better, uh, I feel better. Um, I like what he had to say. Stefan might feel better, but Wiley's concerns are still weighing on his mind. As far as my fears go, it's just not being able to go according to the plan, being in labor too long, and if that's going to create stress on the baby, are they going to create stress on myself to where I have to be, you know, taken to the hospital, and then how are they going to treat me? It has been pretty rough, and it has taken a mental, emotional toll. Will Wiley come to terms with his changing body in time for the birth? It's time, oh my gosh. Meanwhile, in North Carolina, Luna, Taylor, and Mason are worried about saving their love triad. It's been two months since their first session with Kenya and Carl. They had no idea how to have an open relationship, yet they found themselves in an open relationship. The issues I observed with Mason uh, was that he was having trouble adjusting to the fact that she wanted multiple lovers. I think he was questioning his manhood a little bit. 
Today, they're joined by Taylor, Luna's lover, who's also Mason's close friend. I feel excited because you guys, this is like, Welcome. this is our first time we all get to be together. <laughs> we haven't seen each other in a while, but I need to tell you that I did have a secret session with Taylor. Uh -oh. So, <laughs> I, know, I know a little bit more about what's going on, but why don't you guys catch us up? Luna. From last time I was with y'all, um, I feel like it was really, really hard to deal with jealousy, specifically with, um, with Mason being with other, with other women. I was going camping yesterday and I was going to ride there with a friend who I've been intimate with before, maybe sleep in her tent. I don't know where she's at. She had a boyfriend now or what? But Luna's like, do you think you guys will have sex? And I was like, honestly, I don't know. It, that's the killer for you. Right. Yeah, it's totally. Not, it's, it's not even about him having intimacy with another woman. Nope. It's about if he falls in love with a bitch. Right. I mean, yeah. Taylor yeah. cannot be another Mason. They're just mm -hmm. two different individuals in your life. She'll come home from being with Taylor next day, and like I just can't help but to kind of be a little cold or a little bitter sometimes. You know, okay. I'm like, man, like I support this, and still, like I'm just feeling these things. Okay. I can't not feel them. Okay. You know, I'm just all of a sudden feeling like, man, there's all this heavy energy on me now, and I'm like, I don't fucking want that. I want to know where these men are placed, okay. because I feel like there's some little underlying tension that's gonna keep you guys really from living an authentic poly life. All right, what you got, Taylor? Taylor. <laughs> so historically, like throughout our relationship, like I wanted more time. I'm not getting that connection that I want. What's been really challenging with my relationship with Taylor is like energetically, like it's really challenging to have two primary partners. Right. Because I, I want a relationship with myself and right. my and my ladies being pulled in both directions mm -hmm. becomes this like, oh, I should be hanging out with you. Oh, we should, because we'd be so good collaborating, doing this thing. Taylor should know exactly what his role is. Well, I see you it. once a week for two hours. Take it or leave it. What I hear from Luna is, oh, I do want to spend more time with you. Oh, I do want to go to things with you and then go home with you. And I do want to do all these things with you, but then they don't happen. Right. So that's not it's hard. confusing. For Taylor and I, I'm like, oh my gosh, we could do all these things. But since we're not getting the right amount of time together, Taylor started putting in like uh, ultimatums. There's still some hurts around that uh, when it comes to trust because of this like control and ultimatum energy. Are these hard questions? I think so. Yeah. I don't want you to feel like hard time. And you're, it's okay to cry too. It's fine. Like, release the bubble. But w women have not been trained to do this. This is our work, intuitive mm -hmm. work. Which of these men is most emotionally available to you? So, it, I, yeah, I don't know. It, it, I think it depends. Mm -hmm. I think we are like on the end of whatever phase just happened. It feels less intense than it has been. Do you guys have a contract? That's what we're leaving here with today. Mm -hmm. A contract. I don't feel no containers, no contract, yeah. no spelling right. out of what is what. I don't. <laughs> you guys must have contract. Let's really deal with the nitty gritty of what you all are to each other. Because even if you if you get into the contract and you want to shift it later, you renegotiate the contract. Mm -hmm. We've renegotiated a thousand times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With a love contract in place, it seems the threesome might be back on track. I do agree with the conclusions that we came to with Carl and Kenya. I think it was really helpful and really affirming. But no one's prepared for what's coming next. Taylor has something to get yeah. off his chest. Can we pause for a second? Go find yourself another partner. Dude, like, fuck you, man. There are some big changes in Texas, too. Pregnant dad Wiley's finally gone into labor. I guess it's real. I guess he's coming. He's come to midwife Rachel's house for his water birth. It's time. Oh, gosh. But as his labor reaches a grueling 54 hours, Wiley's at his breaking point. We need to go to the hospital. We need some sort of medical intervention. When the baby's heartbeat drops to dangerous levels, 
Wiley is forced to confront one of his biggest fears. Going to the hospital, there has always been that fear of mistreatment of a transgender individual as myself. Sacrificing a home birth, Wiley and Stefan decide they need to head to the hospital, where it becomes clear that Wiley must undergo emergency surgery. The only option that we have is, you know, C-section. This cord was wrapped around his throat. In North Carolina, polyamorous love mentors Kenya and Carl ended their counseling session with Mason, Luna, and Taylor, thinking the threesome had been saved with a love contract. I feel validated and I feel hopeful. It felt good, it felt really good. I want, I want more coaching with them. Oh my goodness, the session was fantastic. It's okay to cry too, it's <laughs> fine, like, release the bubble. I feel like Luna and Mason and Taylor finally told the truth. I'm just all of a sudden feeling like, man, there's all this heavy energy on me now, and I'm like, I don't fucking want that. I really can sense tension when people are not telling the truth. I think we are like on the end of whatever phase just happened. Yeah. Yeah. But there's more drama behind this relationship than meets the eye. <laughs> I think the key is communication. Yeah. Can we pause for a second? A lot of what you're saying is coming across as like, oh, Taylor, you have all these needs, but I can't meet all your needs. Go find yourself another partner. I'm like, fuck you, man. Do you know the reason I felt that is because of the things that you've said? You've said, oh, I do want to be partners with you. Oh, I want to live with you. I want to have kids with both you and Mason. Like, mm -hmm. I want to share this space together. Those are desires and were true at the time. I need to be careful with my words. That's been, like, the challenging theme of this relationship is me feeling like I'm giving and you taking and not having this reciprocal thing. Right now, it feels really clear to me how much you having another partner would, like, give us hope to continue relating. Like, I don't think that the way we're currently relating is going to work. I'm not opposed to that, and I'm actively pursuing that. The way it was being portrayed is like, I'm just like this, ooh, like, luna, 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 luna. Yeah. In reality, like, that's not actually what's happening. Real poly issues. <laughs> This trio is committed to working on their relationship with love coaches Carl and Kenya, who continue to spread love, one polyamorous threesome at a time. The struggles we see in society, um, I think we need those struggles in order to appreciate love. <laughs> what is the future of love? Well, we're creating the new culture. We're creating the future of love. Pregnant dad Wiley's plan for a home birth didn't turn out as he hoped. In his worst nightmare, he was rushed to the hospital for an emergency cesarean. The moment I was strolled into the operating room and they were like, okay, we're, we're pulling him out, you're gonna feel a little bit of pressure. There was a tense wait for his boyfriend, Stefan. It was very difficult to see Wiley in so much pain, and to be so tired. So, did his hospital stay confirm his fears? Thankfully, with our OB, she had actually informed all her nurses and all her surgical team, hey, this is a transgender individual, we need to be protective of who he is, you know, uh, use correct pronouns. There was a few, like, slip-ups where they said mom or her or something, but they instantly corrected themselves. We just kept rolling through it, and Wiley was a champ. But after a staggering 60-hour labor, baby Rowan finally arrived. <laughs> and a couple of weeks later, these proud dads now have a baby on board their bus. He's a baby. He's a baby boy. He's a baby. Our baby boy. He's actually here. He's real. He's yeah. our responsibility now. He's been a joy. He's been crazy, but it's been a joy. It's been so good.
facing his fears means that Wiley's got a new outlook on life. It's taught me so much. It's taught me to be thankful for what women go through and has helped me grow so much and even be able to enjoy this opportunity that most men don't have the chance to experience. And Wiley and Stefan plan to bring Rowan up in a way as unique as these two dads. We want to raise him kind of like in a gender neutral environment as well for him to be exposed to both sides. Oh, boys. If Rowan ended up being a transgender, it'd be amazing that he could come out and be himself and I'd be able to help out a lot. Whenever Rowan is curious about his birth and how we became his dads, we'll just tell him, honestly and straightforward. Raising a baby on a bus is unconventional, to say the least. So do Wiley and Stefan worry. They'll outgrow their first home. Living in the bus with a baby is... It feels very intimate. I'm really glad that we don't have a house or apartment with a nursery. Change your little diaper. I'm going to change you. A little sleepy. Just because then I feel like he would be too far away from us. But there you go. I don't feel like it's more crowded, maybe because he's so small. I feel like his items crowd us more than Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he has a lot of baby stuff. And this couple are sure that going through such an unusual experience has brought them closer together than ever. It feels good and promising to have this little guy, and it kind of gives me hope that our journey will be a good one, you know, because it's not just us anymore. 